Good morning. I am Dr. Jess, Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology, Anudanur College and Hospital, Munachpura. Today's session is on bleeding and clotting disorders. These are the contents, that is, the mechanism of hemostasis, classification of bleeding disorders, and we will describe in detail regarding purpura, hemophilia, von Willebrand disease, and patients on anticoagulant therapy. Whenever there is a tissue injury happens, definitely there will be flow formation. This is the mechanism of hemostasis, which involves basic four steps, that is, formation of initial hemostatic plug, formation of stabilized hemostatic plug, float retraction, fibrinolytic phase. Formation of initial hemostatic plug involves again two phases, that is vascular phase and platelet phase. In vascular phase, there is vasoconstriction, and in platelet phase, there is platelet adhesion, activation, and aggregation. Formation of stabilized hemostatic plug is by means of coagulation phase, in that there is intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway, and common pathway. After a clot is being formed, the clot will retract and it followed by the fibrinolytic. In vascular phase, there is immediate reflex vasoconstriction of small vessels and vasoactive material mediated vasoconstriction. Vasoactive materials are serotonin, histamine, and prostaglandin. In platelet phase, usually you know there is a normal blood flow in the blood vessel. Whenever a tissue injury happens, platelet will adhere to the collagen in the basement membrane, and platelet activation is by means of pseudopody extension and granular release happens that makes the platelet so sticky. And in the final phase, platelets will aggregate, that is platelet aggregation because of the stickiness of the platelet. Formation of stabilized hemostatic plug is by means of intrinsic and extrinsic pathway, which is important because of the action of certain clothing factors starting from clothing factor 1 to its general fletcher factor. We know about the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway finally leads to fibrin formation. Clot retraction is by means of actin and myosin which presents in the blood vessels that helps the platelets to contract and bring all fibrin thread together. And thereby clot retraction happens after 5 to 10. Fibrinolytic phase is by means of pre-calicrate and calicrate and it helps down to reduce the plasminogen to plasmin and thereby forming fibrinolytic phase. These are the classification of bleeding disorders. That is, there is vessel wall disorder, platelet disorder, coagulation disorder and fibrinolytic disorder. This is the classification according to the textbook of Berkets of Order Medicine. And under bleeding disorder and under vessel wall disorder, there is curvy, pushing syndrome, and Heller Stanley syndrome, Rendo Osler Weber syndrome. And platelet disorder, there is congenital and acquired. And in congenital, there is thrombocytopenic uh, purpura, which is associated with certain syndromes, and non thrombocytopenic platelet disorder, and acquired that occurs uh, idiopathic thrombocytopenia and thrombotic thrombocytopenia. Coagulation disorders include hemophilia, von Willebrand disease, and there are the fibrinolytic disorders are there. These are certain laboratory tests for assessing hemostasis that we need to assess platelet count, bleeding time, prothrombin time, ATTT, thrombin time, fibrin degradation product, fibrinogen assay, von Willebrand antigen, coagulation factor disease, and coagulation factor inhibition disease. Coming to the first vessel wall disorder, scurvy. Scurvy is the deficiency of vitamin C when it is less than 10 mg per deciliter. Symptoms of scurvy involve there is swelling and bleeding of the gums, and easy bruising and bleeding occurs, and there will be poor wound healing because this vitamin C is very much needed for the synthesis of collagen, which helps in the integrity of blood vessels. Pushing syndrome. In Cushing syndrome, because of the increased cortisol level, there will be bruising and bleeding in the skin. Heller Stanley syndrome, there are seven types of Heller Stanley syndromes, and in that vascular type is more prone for uh, vessel wall disorders. Prento Osler Weber syndrome, in that there will be positive family history, telangiectasia, epistaxis, GI bleeding, multiple non pulsating vascular lesions can occur. Coming to platelet disorder, there are known thrombocytopenic purpura and thrombocytopenic purpura. Thrombocytopenic purpura 
structure is divided into autoimmune or idiopathic thrombocytopenicopura and thrombotic thrombocytopenicopura. Coming to idiopathic thrombocytopenicopura, it is also known as Burkhoff's disease. It's an autoimmune disease. Patient develops antibody against on platelets and there will be spontaneous appearance of purpuric or hemorrhagic lesions. It may be from tiny red pinpoint petechia to large purple shechymosis and to massive hematoma. There can be epistaxis, hematuria, malaria and hematemesis. This is the purpuric spots that we can see on the or a manifestation include the LB gingival hemorrhage, which is spontaneous, palatal petechial tiny root clusters of reddish spots less than 3 ml, and occasional echimosis can also occur, which is acute. Laboratory findings involve RBC, WBC count would be normal, and platelet count is less than 50,000 per millimeter cube, and bleeding time is prolonged and clotting time is normal. Coming to thrombotic thrombocytopenia, that is Moscovitz disease which is uncommon and life threatening. It is associated with pregnancy, HIV, cancer, bacterial infection, and vasculitis. There would be microangiopathic hemolysis, platelet aggregation, high in form by formation vascular lumen, partial occlusion of the vessel, fragmentation of erythrocytes as well as hemolysis. Occurs. Clinical features include usual features of thrombocytopenia. Along with that, there would be hemolytic anemia, fever, transitory neurologic dysfunction and renal failure. Laboratory findings involve platelet count will be decreased, HB will be decreased, fragmented RBC schistocytes can be seen in the peripheral smear, prothrombin time will be normal, APTT is normal and bilirubin is elevated because of hemolysis. What are the dental considerations in purpura? We have to elicit proper history. Identify if there is any secondary causes, avoid NCIDs and aspirins, use absorbable local hemostatic agents, platelet transfusion should be needed when platelet count is below 30,000 per ml cube. One unit platelet can give 10,000 to 12,000 platelets per ml cube. LA block injections can be given if platelet count is 50,000 per ml cube. Major surgery required platelet count about 75,000 per millimeter cube. We have to administer desmopressin and tranexamic acid in secret cases. Coming to the coagulation disorder, it involves hemophilia, hemophilia B, C, and different diseases. Hemophilia is also known as Habsburg disease and Leder's disease. It's an extinct recessive protein. There is hemophilia A, which is due to the factor H deficiency, which is classic hemophilia. Hemophilia B, which is due to factor IX deficiency, which is known as Christmas disease. And hemophilia C is factor 11 deficiency. So what happens in hemophilia? Normally, whenever there is an injury occurs, along with other substance, clotting factors 8 play a major role and it helps the platelet to plug and the stable fibrin clot forms. But in hemophilia A, there is lack of clotting factor 8 which causes a weak platelet and a weak platelet to form the platelet plug to form. So it can't maintain the integrity of the platelet plug due to the deficiency of factor 8. This is the classification. Severe hemophilia is when there is 8 factor which is less than 1 person. It manifests in infancy, there will be spontaneous hemorrhage in muscles and joints which is hemarthrosis and excessive bleeding after minor trauma. Moderate 1 to 5 percent of normal Actually, manifest after two years of life, moderate trauma causes bleeding and occasional discontinuous bleeding occurs. And mild is more than 5 and less than 40% of the factory present. It is diagnosed in teenagers and adults. Significant trauma is needed to induce bleeding and there will be no spontaneous bleeding. Clinical features involved. Manifestation starts after 6 months of age. Joint hemorrhages can happen, subcutaneous hemorrhages can occur, intracranial hemorrhages can occur, and pseudotumor of hemophilia can be seen in joint. Oral manifestation include persistent bleeding from freedom of lipanta, prolonged bleeding after tooth extraction, hematoma can be seen in the floor of the mouth, and bleeding can be associated with the tooth erection, and also they can be gingival. Hemophilia B is a also known as Christmas disease, which is also known as royal disease because it runs in the royal family in the uh, European regions. Laboratory findings include clotting time is prolonged, bleeding time is normal, 
prothrombin time is normal, platelet count is normal, but ABTD is normal. How do we manage a patient with a hemoglobin? We have to take a thorough history, also family history, past history of bleeding, proper clinical examination should be done, advice maintain good oil hygiene and dietary restriction of sugar, prudent application is needed, early detection of caries and tissue seal and application is important, avoid NSAIDs, Paracetamol and Cardain is much more safe and minimal trauma should be there by taking IUPs in mandibular region. Avoid lingual infiltration and submucosal injection. Infraligamentary and intra osseous injections can be preferred and use lock measures of hemostasis. Extractions can be done when there is 50 to 75 percentage of that rate. Minimum bond should be removed. Non traumatic suture should be given. Avoid cotton roll injury. Rest saliva injectors on course. Use rubber dam. And avoid sharp edges to apply damages. We have to give antibiotic coverage. When there is a need, we have to give the pressing sprays. And tranexamic acid can be of use when they, when they report some procedures. Von Willebrand disease is also known as pseudohemophilia vascular hemophilia. It's the most common hereditary clotting disorders. Von Willebrand factor is a carrier glycoprotein of factor 8 that is a quantitative or qualitative abnormality. It's an autosomal dominant disorder. It's described by Eric et al. von Willebrand in 1920. Here also there is a qualitative defect of factor 8 which results in the abnormal bloated blood formation. Clinical features include Children are most commonly affected. Human protection is there. Positive family history will be there. Excessive bleeding spontaneously after an anatomy can occur. Spontaneous epistaxis can occur and cutaneous ectomysis can be seen. Oral manifestation includes there will be spontaneous bleeding from the gums and the flow of mouth. Laboratory findings is almost same as that of hemophilia, but you can go for one to the factor and access the medical also. Management include transmission of PRP, local hemostatic measures, avoid aspirin, and sepsis. Coming to management of patient on anticoagulant therapy, anticoagulants can be heparin and warfarin. Heparin inhibits conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin by activating antithrombin 3. It acts on factor 9 and 12 and increases platelet aggregation. Staff life is 1 to 4 hours and dose is 5000 unit follows 1000 to 1500 every 4 hours. Prothrombin time in the TT. TT is blue. Warfarin is an antagonic to vitamin K dependent coagulation factors that is 2, 7, 9, 10. Its half life is 36 to 48 hours. 10 to 50 mg body dose can be given. 2 to 10 mg maintenance dose can be given. Prothrombin time and APTT would be prolonged. What is an INR? Prothrombin time ratio, that is, patients' prothrombin time by control prothrombin time when an international reference thromboplastin reagent would have been used. Normal patients with normal prothrombin time is INR1, therapeutic range is 2 to 5, level at which alveolar surgery carried out would be less than 3.5. What do you know about warfarin heparin bridge therapy? Indications involve minor surgeries and INR more than 3.5. There is a modification of anticoagulant therapy in the bridge. Discontinue warfarin for two days preoperatively. Make patients on heparin prior to surgery. After surgery, warfarin starts simultaneously with heparin until INR reaches a therapeutic level. Discontinue heparin after that. Heparin warfarin will be overlapping for there for four days. So this is all about bleeding and clotting disorder. Remember, there is vascular disorders, bleeding disorders, platelet disorders and coagulation disorders and also you need to know about the management of patients on purpura, hemophilia as well as patients on anticoagulant therapy. Thank you so much.